We are back in the garage for the first time in 2023, so here's an update on all things uh, Lotus. <laughs> watching my content for a while you know that my buddy uh, Ryan blew up the transmission in this beautiful Lotus Evora and it has since had so many problems since we put it back together I mean honestly the damage was pretty impressive I'm going to put some photos over here for you to see just the absolute carnage that came out of this car I mean parts of the transmission blew through the back seat <laughs> into the rear cabin. Since we had to pull the engine out, repair the transmission, and fix a ton of stuff, I say repair the transmission, but really it was toast, we went ahead and threw a supercharger on there. This is getting a new supercharger in the new year. Hopefully we'll figure out whatever electrical problems the car is having and get it back on the road. This modified channel, Saxon has been working on this turbo case swap Lotus Elise. This thing is an absolute beast. Still has a little bit of a ways to go, but it's currently making about 450 horsepower at the dyno, but we're taking a break to work on my car, which has been sitting in the driveway with no body panels on it since we left for Christmas. Does that leave us for our car? Well, I said I was gonna have it done by Christmas and in true project car fashion, got absolutely nowhere close to doing that. Unfortunately, had to leave for two weeks for vacation. I know, real sad. Um, so tonight we are going to try and at least get some of the panels sprayed so that we can see what the paint is going to look like and maybe get it done before I leave for the Scottsdale auction. Without the front and rear clams on, the car itself looks pretty bare and even smaller than it normally does and uh, it's kind of a disaster. It really just gives us a perspective of how much work we have ahead of us when it comes to getting this car back together and in good condition, starting with the clams and the paint and then going into it. But for tonight, we're just trying to dive back into things, get reorganized so we can get started again tomorrow. I have just a little bit more than a week left before I leave for the 2023 Scottsdale auction for two and a half weeks, which means I have so much to get done in order to get this car through paint and back together. And I have a ton of stuff that I've decided to do in the meantime. So we have to get my two main clams painted, um, all of my accessories and my smaller miscellaneous parts. Of course, while I'm in here and already have the rear clam off, I want to go ahead and put on the new aftermarket exhaust that we've got going on to it, as well as the rear diffuser panel delete. And when we bought the Lamborghini project car, it came with this carbon wing, which looked ridiculous on that car because of the proportions, but actually follows the body line of the Lotus Lease pretty well. So we're going to get this uh, cleaned up. If you thought that I was done with paint prep beforehand, well, we still have many, 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 many more hours to go. I mean, even this clip right here, which is sped up, really doesn't do it justice to how extensive paint prep is, especially if the paint that was previously done on the car wasn't done correctly. So now I am sanding off layers of paint that I didn't even know there. Apparently, prior to me purchasing this car, it was white. Um, we suspect it was white from factory. It was black when I bought it. Then we had Plasti dipped it the pink color, but a lot of the work was done pretty poorly on this car, including a lot of the fiberglass repairs. So luckily, my husband Saxon is an absolute wizard when it comes to fiberglass. He had to go in and do a lot of major repairs to the fiberglass here, which will help with the structural integrity and then it's just back to more sanding. This is one of the biggest downsides to doing a complete color change is that you can't neglect any of the smaller, more annoying nooks and crannies of the car, the door sills, everything that goes into it. You can't just do a casual respray of the car. And because we're doing a pretty dramatic color, this has been an awful process. So while I am sanding, socks in the sanding, it's amazing how much sanding has gone into such a small car. Many hours of sanding and paint prep and Saxon getting annoyed with me later. He says that it's too cold to spray. We're going to try and spray and we're going to try and avoid something called solvent pop yep. between layers by waiting extra long between the primer and base coats and clear coat. We don't know if it's going to make it work, but luckily we're just going to spray these smaller parts today. My access panels whatever this cowl part is technically called, and my hard top. Once the sanding is done, we blow out the garage and go ahead and mask off any area that we don't want to get paint on. This can be a pretty annoying process. And then after that, you go ahead and degrease it two or three times. This is about the point that we usually kick people out of the garage because if you touch it, you have to start all over again. And maybe this little space heater will save us. It's probably not gonna save us. Daniel, what do you think? Thank you, Daniel. I'm 
more. This is both the most satisfying and most stressful part of the entire process. Saxon is not a professional painter by any means, obviously because we are painting the car in our garage, but he is incredibly meticulous and has painted several cars um, very well. It just goes to show how much of a difference paint prep and technique can make compared to not just having a regular good paint booth. So we got the first layer of primer down and now we wait. Time to spray the base coat. It's happening. The moment that I've been anxiously awaiting and honestly after the first layer I hated the color. I couldn't stand the way that it looked. It looked very thin and Tiffany blue but after the second coat it turned out this beautiful peppermint Porsche pretty, peppermint pretty green slick. and now we sit and wait until tomorrow and hopefully get started on the front and rear clams. It wasn't warm enough to spray last night, but Saxon came up with a great idea of warming up the clear coat in a hot water bath, and it actually sprayed pretty well. The weather is a little bit warmer today, so we set all of the parts outside in the sun to help them cure. Can we just admire this reflection for a second, though? This has not been color sanded or buffed or anything. This is just the car fresh out of paint from last night. We still have a long way to go before we get the rest of the car painted. There is a ton of fiberglass work that needs to be done, but we're going to aim to try and get it done in the next week before I leave for the 2023 Scottsdale auction.